from inside the warehouse at Oreo Park at Camden Yards, it is the Masson All Access Podcast, brought to you by Toyota for legendary safety and reliability. Choose Toyota and let's go places. Paul Mancano, Brendan Mortensen, and Tim Leonard via Zoom to complete the all-future Orioles draft. Now, if you didn't listen to part one, you should listen or watch part one. This is honestly a better visual experience, I'll go ahead and say, except for our faces. You have the big board here, and essentially what we're doing, Brendan, is we are drafting the best Orioles team for the year 2025. We've completed the first eight rounds, and we have rounds 9 through 15 today. Yeah, and it is only for the year 2025. We will not be looking at any stats for the future seasons beyond that. We will not be looking at any stats leading up to 2025. This is just you have one season to try to win a World Series, build the best team possible for that year. And we have quite a lot of great players off the board. We do. We have quite a lot of great players left on the board as well. Brendan, you had the number one overall pick. That I did. You took Adley Rutschman. Sure did. Who else did you take with your seven following picks? Yeah, Adley Rutschman was my first overall pick and my starting catcher. Selected John Rhodes to be my first baseman. Not a traditional first baseman, but he's going to play there for me. Connor Norby locking down second base. In my outfield, I have Austin Hayes, Colton Kowser, and Heston Kerstad. And my dynamic lefty duo as my starting pitchers, John Means and D.L. Hall. And Tim Leonard, our good friend, had the number two overall pick. Tim, who are all the players that you have selected? Well, I took Gunnar Henderson. I was between him and Grayson Rodriguez. Took Gunnar with the number two overall pick. He is my third baseman currently. Ryan Mountcastle was my second pick. He's my first baseman. Jorge Mateo is also in my infield right now at shortstop. And then in the outfield, I've got Cedric Mullins and Kyle Stowers. And my pitching rotation is currently Kyle Bradish and Tyler Wells, followed by Felix Bautista, the only reliever that has been taken, but I think clearly the best reliever on the board. And I started with the number three pick. I took Grayson Rodriguez. In my infield, I have Kobe Mayo. Again, not a typical first baseman. That's that's where he's going to play for me because of the dearth of first baseman available. I've got Joey Ortiz at second. I've got Jordan Westberg at third. And I've got Jackson Holiday at shortstop. And then the outfield, I have Dylan Beavers and Anthony Santander. And joining Grayson Rodriguez in the rotation is Dean Kramer. So we are taking... A position, a player for every position on the diamond. We're taking a DH. We're taking four starting pitchers and two relievers. Brendan. Yes. You have the first pick in round nine. It's a snake order draft. Who would you like to select with your first pick of day two? Yeah. Been given this a lot of thought, and there are a few different ways that I could go. I need a shortstop, and I need a third baseman, so I could take one of those guys there. There isn't really anybody on my board that I love at that position right now. I think there are a few guys that I have in mind, nobody that I really need. I, and I'm looking at the positions that Tim still has a need at, that Paul still has a need at, and I'm not really seeing either of the guys in consideration for those two spots going off the board. Okay. So I think I might wait just a little bit to take those guys that could come back to haunt me. Good. And it just might, and it is scaring me a little bit. <laughs> and that fear is going to lead me to reach a little bit <laughs> on really the only shortstop that I am still comfortably taking at this point, and that's Cesar Prieto. Cesar Prieto is going to be my pick here. It's a little bit down the board, but he is still the 18th ranked prospect in the Orioles system. Saw his first professional action last year. Had a 17, 718 OPS between high A and double A. Struggled a little bit once he got up to double A, but again, this was his first U.S. action, but he is a very advanced hitter, has a very advanced approach. I could see him turning into a Terran Vavra type of player at the big league level who just has a very good plate approach, is a very good average hitter. And Cesar Prieto, really the only shortstop left on my board that I was comfortable putting at that spot. So Cesar Prieto, maybe a bit of a reach for me here going based off of my own personal big board, but it's still my pick and it's the safe way to go here to make sure that I didn't get totally boxed out of that position. Safe way, not a sponsor. Uh, he can play all three positions, shortstop, second base, third base. I don't think it's a reach at all. I think Cesar Prieto being the Orioles' number 18 prospect and looking as good as he did in high A before struggling in double A, 
I think it's entirely fair. I mean, cumulative 718 OPS in 115 games. He did struggle in five games in the Arizona Fall League, hit 189, but it's five games. Five games, yeah. So I think Cesar Prieto is entirely fair to be taken here, especially considering he's going to be in his age 26 season in the year 2025. Tim, what do you think? So I think it's a good pick. I also, to go into my pick, you kind of teased it a little bit there, Brendan, because you said Cesar Prieto could be a Terran Vavra. I'm just going to take Terran Vavra. Why would we take the guy that could be Terran Vavra? Sticking with the theme of my team, he's a guy that's played already in the majors. I know his ceiling isn't enormous, but he's only going to be 27. He's going to have a couple, a little bit more experience at the major league level under his belt. Also, I'm looking at my roster right now. I need second base. I need a corner outfield spot. Vavra gives me some flexibility. He can play both of those options. I think because he's not considered a prospect anymore, he's not as attractive of a, of, of a pick. But again, my logic is I'm trying to win in 2025. I'm not going to take the guy that could be Vavra. I'm just going to take Vavra already because he's proven it a little bit. And I think it's a safer option. Yeah, I mean, if my hole on my team was at second base and not at shortstop. I did have Terran Favre higher on my board than I had Cesar Prieto, and he would have been my I gotcha. pick. Yeah. I just didn't have the need there. And I would have taken him with the next pick, Tim, because I would have tried to slot him into the one of the... I finally did it to you guys. Yeah. He did it to me all of, all of the first round. Exactly. First day. So you have uh, stolen away the player that I was going to take. I still have a hole at catcher. I've got a hole in the outfield. And hole at DH. I don't think anybody's filled DH yet, although that's probably just going to be the last hitter that we have available. Uh, and then I have two pitchers in the rotation in Grayson Rodriguez and Dean Kramer. Looking at my board right now, really don't need any infield help. And I'm looking at the outfield, and the problem is there aren't too many great outfield prospects that are left, guys. Hmm. So I'm thinking about it, and I'm considering what I need to do here. And I'm going to go ahead and just take the best player available in this instance. And this is a guy who cannot play in the outfield. This is a guy that I'm going to have to play as my DH. Hmm. And it's going to be Ramon Arias is going to be the best hmm. player available left here. Now, I know that he can't play in the outfield, so I'm having to stick him at DH. And I know a lot of his value comes from his defense. But I'm the manager of this team. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll insert him in some games in, uh, in shortstop and rotate that DH spot. That's not part of the rules. I'm just making them up as I go along. Ramon Arias is only going to be in his age 31 season, so maybe he'll lose a step defensively, but if he's just DHing, that won't be a, a big deal at that point. Third base is probably going to be his defensive home for this year. We'll see what it looks like going forward, but 3.6 baseball reference war this year with 16 homers and a 720 OPS. I think I'm getting a very solid player in Ramon Arias. Yeah, I was hoping that Arias would come back around to me at the next swing. Obviously, I still have that need at third base, so I was hoping he would be there, and I was hoping that you would stick to your trend of not taking anybody seemingly over the age of 15 on your team, but <laughs> Ramon Arias, I think, is the correct pick here. He is uh, one of the next players that I had on my big board. And again, I, I was hoping he would come back to around, around to me at the swing when I had my next pick. Next up, though, I'm going to take somebody to complete my lineup. I'm not going to look back at rotation just yet. I'm going to finish out my outfield by taking Judd Fabian here. This is a player that, uh, similar to some of the other players on my team, like you said, Brendan, they're not 15, but they're pretty young. I have taken an overall very young team with a lot of upside, and I'm taking a guy here in Judd Fabian, who last year was taken in the second round, actually twice over was taken in the second round in 2022, and the year before in 2021 when he was taken by the Red Sox but didn't sign. He finished the season this year in high A. He's going to be 24 in 2025. So he's a little bit older than some of the guys he was drafted with because he had, was selected twice. And in his short stint in professional ball, he hit 333 with three homers and an OPS over 1,000 in 22 games. Can play all three defensive outfield positions. Is the Orioles' number 22 prospect. I think probably a little bit too low considering his ceiling uh, and his advanced approach at the plate. But for right now, I'm sticking him in what? Left field, Brendan? Yep. That so left field? A center fielder who can play left with that expansive moved back left field wall. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, I think it's a good pick. Truthfully, I was a little bit surprised that there was such a gap in where these two guys were drafted with Judd Fabian and Dylan Beavers. I think they have 
similar upside. I think Dylan Beaver is a little bit more so, but they're still two very solid players. The only thing is there are 14 spots between them in the Orioles prospect rankings. Beavers yes. is the number eight prospect in the Orioles MLB pipeline prospect rankings. Fabian is 22. So you could argue Fabian should be higher, but Beavers, I think, still, we can't forget about the kind of upside that he has. And again, these are two well-established college hitters, so there is a chance that they have a Colton Kowser type of trajectory and are able to get to the bigs by 2025. We will just need to see very good play from Dylan Beavers and Judd Fabian for them to get any significant amount of playing time once that year rolls along. All right, Tim, your next pick. Well, I'm in a tough spot here. I'm, I'm really surveying my options. I think there's some pitchers that are going to come off the board soon, but I feel like we're all just kind of waiting for someone to take the first pitcher because we kind of have a group of pitchers that are maybe in a similar tier Yeah. without giving away all of my thinking. I'll leave it at that. I could go into the catcher ranks. It feels like at some point that second catcher is going to come off the board, but you know, I'm going to go with the guy to complete my outfield. And a guy who is currently 24 years old, had a very underratedly good season at the double-A buoy level. And I'm going to go with Hudson Haskin here, who is the number 21 prospect in the Orioles system. I think it's a little puzzling that he didn't get elevated to triple-A, but I'm confident that by the year 2025, he will be a factor in the Orioles' major league team. And it kind of fills a positional need, and it's a guy that I think still has a good amount of ceiling here. He hit 264 with an 822 OPS in Bowie last season. I will never understand why he wasn't promoted this year because he was good from start to finish. It's not like those numbers ticked up near the end of the year and they just didn't have time to promote him. He was great all season long. And for somebody that also has high draft pedigree in 2020, he was a highly drafted player. Another guy who has undergone significant swing changes, I think you could say. I think it's a great pick here because I think that even though he didn't get up to AAA, I think that his level of play has shown that he can be a big leaguer within the next couple of years. Yeah, truthfully, Tim, not the outfielder that I thought you were going to take, but I think Hudson Haskin, still a solid pick here with a lot of upside. Brendan, are you going to take Me? that outfielder that you thought I might. was going to take? <laughs> and He's not particularly a designated hitter, but... I mean, neither I, was Ramon Arias. Neither was Ramon Arias, and I do yeah. think he is the best hitter remaining, and I think Tim will probably take him on the next turn. So I'm going to take Ryan McKenna, and he's going to be my designated hitter. He is the best position player that I had left remaining on the board. Had just a 634 OPS last year, 104 big league games. But again, we're kind of getting into the category here of... You know what? Yeah, let's do put, you want to, do you let's want to put Ryan McKenna in right field yeah. and put Heston Kerstad as my designated hitter. I that's think Ryan I McKenna gives you a lot more value as a defender because that's where a lot of his value came from last year. Look, this is still a positive war player at the big league level. And with where we are in this draft, I feel pretty lucky to be getting somebody who is A, at the big league level, and B, has proven himself to be a pretty valuable player at the big league level. Ryan McKenna, not a superstar type, but he is still valuable to any team, and I am happy to be picking him up here. The only concern for me, Ryan McKenna, only .2 war, according to baseball reference, last year. And I know that the Orioles used him a lot when they were facing lefties and they wanted to either move Cedric Mullins down in the lineup or keep him out of the lineup entirely. But he only hit two homers with the 634 OPS, so that offense does have to be a lot better but maybe it, it will improve because he's going to be in his age 28 season in 2025. Yeah, and he'll be hitting his stride. And I think, again, given where we are in this draft, to get a big leaguer, is it feels like a win. He's a pretty good big league player. I think here, obviously, there is a third baseman that I could take. I don't think I need to take him right this second unless Tim wants to be really mean and take him as his designated hitter. But I don't think he will do that. And I sure hope that he doesn't do that. So with that hope in mind, I am going to stray away from my lineup and I am going to go back to the starting rotation and I am going to go with the best pitcher on my board, who is Drew Rahm. He is the Orioles' 19th ranked prospect, had a 4.43 ERA in 26 games between AA and AAA. That ERA was at 4.54 in seven games in Norfolk last year. He's just entering his age 23 season right now. In 2025, he'll be entering his age 25 season. I think that is when we will see the highest upside 
of Drew Rahm. Look, I don't think he is going to be the ace of a rotation somewhere. I don't know if Drew Rahm has that high-end rotation potential, but for my third starter, I think it's a solid pick, and I think he is the best pitcher that I had on my board. I agree. I think he's very, very close to the big leagues. I think that uh, you know he may not have the kind of upside that some of the other pitching prospects have, but it's very hard to get to AAA in your age 22 season, and that's what he did. High school pick. And yes, I know I have three lefties in my rotation. You do, yeah. yeah. Lefty, lefty, lefty in John Means, Steel Hall, and Drew Rahm. But look, Brendan, in today's day and age, doesn't hurt. Teams load up on lefties in their in their lineup. A left-handed pitcher at surprise. Oriole Park at Camden Yards? Can't Seems hurt. like it'll work. Tim, what do you think? Well, I, I see what Brendan's doing there by hinting at the fact that I shouldn't take the player that I was eyeing in the next pick. He's kind of playing the game of trying to make sure that he doesn't get boxed out of the players he wants and pushing that down the road a little bit. So I'll just leave it at that. I, I understand what he's doing and I, I get it, but it's, it's benefiting his team a little bit. Yeah. What are you thinking, Tim? Are you going to going to go ahead and step on his neck here? I mean, Tim, look, I could have taken any of the two catchers remaining as my designated hitter. Brendan, who was it that was complaining and I sure about didn't. being out, boxed out at, shortstop I, while Jorge look, Mateo was still on the board. I didn't. You're saying, oh, I there are no shortstops left. I, I am just out. pointing out the nice person that I have been. That's that's all I'm doing. Nice. That's all I'm doing. Tim, what are you doing? You know, I, I'm going to box him out, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the guy anyway, and it's his loss. I mean, there were several pitchers that I could be taking here, and I'm just going to hope that they come back around maybe and try and round out my rotation later. I, I think he's He's gone too far with this one. So I'm going to take Max Wagner <laughs> at third base here. And he probably won't be up until maybe 2024 late or early 2025 season. But I can't justify letting him pass any longer when Paul has already taken Jed Fabian, who is lower in the prospect rankings by a good bit. He's the number 15 prospect in the Orioles system here. I understand Brendan's going to be mad at me, but look, I need a it DH. Happens. He He has some... Uh, potential to be kind of a middle of the order type of hitter if all things go well and was a former ACC player of the year. So a second round pick from this year out of Clemson is the number 15 prospect in the system. We're getting late in the draft. I'm going to take him when he's still available. All is fair in love, war, and the Mass and All Access podcast drafts. I, I think that's uh, what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do, Tim. I will say, though, if you really wanted to, you could have waited on Max Wagner because I don't have room in my lineup right now. The only open spot I have is catcher. So I couldn't stick Max Wagner there. So if you wanted oh, you're to right. take a pitcher, yeah. you could have waited for me to make my two picks and come back around. I hate to uh, to break it to you, but you could have waited a couple picks. Yeah, so I blew it there, but I still stuck it to Brendan a little bit, which that's, was the goal. Fine. I could have done it later, but I did it now because it just I was anxious to do it. I get it. I totally get it. Well, I am on the clock once again with back-to-back -back picks, and I have a lot of holes in my rotation. The only open spot in my lineup is catcher. I'm going to continue to wait on catcher for right now, and I'm going to take another pitcher. Drew Rahm is off the board. I'm just going to go down to the next guy on my list, and that's Chase McDermott. Chase McDermott, who is the Orioles' number fourteen, no, sorry, number thirteen prospect, he's going to be in his age twenty six season at that point. He finished the year in Double A, came over in the Astros, came over from the Astros in the Trey Mancini trade. He really struggled in twenty twenty two, a five five six ERA in twenty seven appearances, but he still has that upside as the Orioles' number thirteen prospect. So Chase McDermott has been added to my rotation that already includes Grayson Rodriguez and Dean Kramer. What do you guys think? Yeah, good pick. I think there is kind of a jumble of pitchers here, and I think taking any of them, I really don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, next up, I'm going to go and take the first reliever in my bullpen. And I'm going to take uh, a... No, I'm not. I'm going to switch <laughs> it up. I'm going to wait on reliever, and I'm going to go back to my rotation... Is what I'm going to do, guys. That's what you're going to do. Because I missed a name <laughs> as I was going down my pitchers. I missed Seth Johnson. You did. But I'm going to include him here. Yep. Seth Johnson, you know what, Brendan? Can you move Chase McDermott down? This feels like something. <laughs> so I'm going to move Chase McDermott down to my number four starting pitcher, and I'm going to take Seth Johnson. 
because I flat out missed him. He's a lefty. He's the only lefty that I am having in my rotation. He, too, is going to be, isn't he? Correct? He's a righty. Seth a Johnson's righty. a righty. Like I said, he's a righty, <laughs> yeah. and I'm going with all four righties. Uh, he is the Orioles' number 10 prospect. He came from Tampa Bay in the Trey Mancini trade, which we forget was a three-team trade. People forget. 3 0 ERA and seven starts. He did have Tommy John surgery in late July, uh, and he's finished the year in high A, but that was midseason. I think the road back to recovery and to the big leagues is long for Seth Johnson, but I'm taking a swing on the upside here, and the age should be fine, age 26. It's just a matter of can he build up his innings enough to be in the big leagues by 2025. I think it's it's going to be dicey, but given it that it's this late in the draft, I'm going to take a swing on him. Yeah, he's another he's another one in the jumble. I think it's another good pick. All right, Tim. Well, speaking of that jumble of pitchers, I'm going to take another name from that, who is a lefty, 22 years old, and that's Kate Povich, another guy who came over at the deadline last year. I think these guys are going to be grouped together as we progress here and get into the later years of them being in the Orioles system. Seth Johnson, Kate Povich, Chase McDermott. Povich, out of that group of three, A, he's the only lefty. B, I think he's probably the safest of the three options, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I think that he's a little bit more polished than the other guys. The question mark with him is going to be more, will his stuff translate? Will his stuff be good enough to the point where he can be a mid to back end rotation guy when he gets to the majors? But just because I kind of viewed all those guys the same, I am I feel fine that I was kind of the last to take out of the three of those guys. It's tough to separate them when they all came to the Orioles in deadline deals that were all made within a 24-hour span. Some of them have similar names. I mean, Cade Povich, Chase McDermott. It's kind of hard to remember all these guys. However, at some point, one of them, two of them, will separate themselves over the coming years. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he was kind of the last of that group. I'm going to take kind of... Maybe he's in a tier by himself here. I think there's a little bit of separation between this pitcher and the rest of them. I was going to wait on starting pitchers. You are completely done, Paul, with your yes. starting rotation. But Tim still has another starting pitcher to take. So I don't want to completely wait on this guy. And I'm going to take Justin Armbruster. He is the 30th ranked prospect in the Orioles system. Currently at AA, he'll be entering his age 26 season by the time that 2025 rolls along. Had a 385 ERA in 26 games between high A and double A. Had a really good whip last year. I think Justin Armbruster is kind of the last pitcher among these ranks that I would feel comfortable having in my starting rotation. There's a few guys with good upside. I just think Armbruster is the way to go here, given the fact that he is still a top 30 prospect in this system, has shown a lot of upside. I don't think he is quite to the tier of Cade Povich, Chase McDermott, but I think he is the next best. Did I spell his name right? It is a complicated name to spell. That wasn't an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I believe you did. Okay, it looks you. like you did. And then after Arm Brewster, I am completely done with my starting pitchers. I only need a third baseman, and neither Tim nor Paul has any room to take a third baseman. Before you make that pick, do you want to run through real quickly your team? Because sure. Because we've just completed another round. We already have a lot of guys on our team. Yeah. Just a reminder for the audio listeners. Yeah, my catcher, the number one overall pick, Adley Rutschman. First base is John Rhodes. Second base, Connor Norby. My shortstop is Cesar Prieto. The outfield looks like Austin Hayes, Colton Kowser, and Ryan McKenna. My designated hitter is Heston Kerstad. My completely full now starting rotation is John Means, D.L. Hall, Drew Rahm, and Justin Armbruster. And I have yet to select a reliever. Tim, who's on your team? Well, I'm glad you asked, Paul. My team is Ryan Mountcastle at first base. Taryn Vavra is currently my second baseman. Jorge Mateo at shortstop. Gunnar Henderson, my top overall pick, is playing third base. In the outfield from left to right, I've got Hudson Haskin, Cedric Mullins, Kyle Stowers. My DH is Max Wagner. I currently have three pitchers, and I'm the only one still trying to fill out the starting pitching rotation. My three pitchers are... Kyle Bradish, Tyler Wells, and Cade Povich. And then I also have a reliever, and I think I'm still the only one with the reliever, you and are. that's Felix Bautista. And my team consists of Kobe Mayo at first base, Joey Ortiz at second, Jordan Westberg is at third, Jackson Holiday is at short, Judd Fabian 
Dylan Beavers and Anthony Santander are my three outfielders. I have Ramon Rios as my DH, and then my four starting pitcher spots are all taken. Grayson Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, Seth Johnson, and Chase McDermott. Brendan. Yes. Who are you going to take? Yeah, so this is the point of the draft where I can just complete... I don't have to take a third baseman until my very last pick because neither you nor Tim has a DH spot available or an infield spot available. And the guy that I'm going to take at third base, he can't play catcher. So I can wait on him until the end of the draft. And if I am waiting on him, then that means the only other position that I will take is a reliever. There are two relievers that I have been going back and forth on, but I think the reliever that I am going to go with is Dylan Tate. He will be entering his age 31 season at that point, which again, if Dylan Tate was a position player entering his age 31 season, I'd have a few more questions. But Dylan Tate entering his age 31 season as a reliever, the reason that I go with him is because he's just got a better track record. We saw what he did last year. ERA was just over three, which was not as low as some others on this team, but the whip was better. The whip was under one, and we have seen now multiple years of success for Dylan Tate, so I am banking on that track record a little bit when looking ahead. So Dylan Tate is the reliever that goes off the board for me here. Like it a lot. I think he is neck and neck with the next reliever who's going to be taken. The question is, do you want the more solid ground ball reliever, or do you want the guy who hunts the strikeout who doesn't have as long a track record? So Dylan Tate, good pick. Tim, what do you think, and who's your next pick? So I'm down to, as I said, got catcher. I could go with the starter. I could go with the reliever. But same situation that Brendan's in with third base. You guys can't take another starting pitcher. So I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to dive into catcher here because I think there is a decent gap between the number two and the number three catcher. And I'm going to take Samuel Basayo here, who is, I think, maybe the most underrated Orioles prospect. The fact that he's the number 12 prospect and he slipped to this point, I guess, The reason why he's slipped, quote unquote, to this point is because he's still only 18 years old. We don't know if he's going to be up in 2025 and be a factor with the major league level at that point. But if you were to pull the general Orioles fan and Orioles listener to this podcast and ask them who are the top 15 prospects in the Orioles system, I feel like Basile would be the name that people forget the most. And that probably shouldn't be the case. He's definitely someone that has a high ceiling. So I'll grab him here at the, at the catcher position. Yeah, the ceiling is certainly there. Of course, the question with Basayo is because he is so young, what kind of impact could he realistically have at the big league level in 2025? But this is, what, the second to last round. Tim needs a catcher. He knew Paul needed a catcher. And we have drafted a lot of players where we don't really know what impact they might have in 2025. This is the part of the draft that we are at. It's a lot of theoretical upside. I just want to bring up the fact that you roasted me for taking somebody who's going to be 23 in Dylan Beaver. Well, look, there's no better option. There's no better option. Let me finish. Who is going to be 23 in 2025. And Tim just took a player who's going to be 20 in 2025. And you throw your hands up and shake your head. There's no better option. The, Three the, the catcher difference. position is thin. Oh, the, I know. They're, I'm going to take the last catcher available, Brandon. Yeah, who also might not even be in the bigs in 2025. Right. He's going to be much closer. Yeah, he could be. Who There's knows? a four-year difference. And that's Who's to say? I'm going to take the final catcher on this board, and that's going to be Silas Ardwan. He's going to be 24. I mean, there's a better chance that a 24-year-old is going to be in the big leagues. However, Tim, I don't fault you for going for the upside. My beef was more with Brendan. Yeah, isn't it always? <laughs> the, the narrative that was spun here. Isn't it always? Silas Ardwan, going to be 24. He finished the season with single A, Del Marva. Hit just 192 without a homer and a 606 OPS, but only 16 games. Uh, he's a fourth-round pick. So I'm going with the draft upside here. Has good bloodlines. Again, he's the last catcher, and if I didn't take him, I'd be looking at Maverick Handley, who finished the year in double A. is going to be 27. Creed Willems who's going to be 22 at that point, and he just hit 190. Connor Pavoloni. Yeah, not not many guys that uh, that fit this bill. And look, it's because the Orioles are doing this on purpose it's because they have Adley Rutschman and they just got James McCann. So they don't need a ton of minor league catching depth, but it leaves me with Silas Ardwan as my penultimate pick. Yeah. I'm going to make my final pick. No, I've... How many players do I have left? Two more picks left. Two more picks. We'll go back around. So I didn't need I to was take wrong. a catcher. I was wrong when I said it was the last round. Ah, 
So I didn't. I was. Take the I was incorrect. Huh. I feel uh, duped, if you will. Wow. I, I was just Some wrong. Misinformation I mean, I, being spread around. I was not fact checked. Okay. Well, I didn't need to take a catcher, but I did anyway. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take one of my first two relievers here, Brendan. And uh, I could have waited. Wow. I could have waited to take Silas Arduan. Here we are. I, and yet. I was incorrect, and I apologize for that. Yeah, I was not fact checked. Your apology doesn't take Silas Arduan off the board, Brendan. Uh, I'm going to take the only other reliever that I have kind of in this tier, and that's CNL Perez. Uh, I think that he, similar, we kind of hinted at when you took Dylan Tate, Brendan, uh, that he is going to be, you know, he is a higher upside pick maybe because he hunts strikeouts a little bit more than Dylan Tate. But I think he has a lower floor because prior to his 2021, 2022 season, I should say, he had an ERA over six. He had been used as a starter a little bit in Cincinnati as well as being a reliever. The Orioles appear to have unlocked something in CNL Perez. But relievers are year to year, and I think that's why we're seeing them go off the board as late as they are here. Tim? Well, I'm going to go for a reliever, too. I would have taken CNL Perez there, but I'm going to take Brian Baker, who is currently 28 years old, so he'll be 30 in the 2025 season. I think out of the remaining relievers, he has the best mix of already proven it a little bit at the major league level and also good enough stuff that I think it'll translate his advanced metrics and everything speak to him being just a little bit higher of a tier than some of the other relievers on the board. So I'm going to take him to round out my bullpen. I have the final two picks of my draft here. I have two positions remaining being third base and reliever. And honestly, I'm not too mad about this third baseman. I think Tim seemed to have the notion that there was only one third baseman that I could take. Well, it's and because if you I didn't it take this third baseman, yeah. then all hope would be lost. You're I might the, as well throw my team out the window. That's what you implied, Brandon. If, that's not what Tim right. said. Right. Well, you set Tim up. You said, "I hope he. I sure hope he doesn't take the only other good third baseman." And then he did. But there's another one. Okay. And I'm going to take him right now. It's going to be Daryl Hernandez. Daryl Hernandez, in a very similar ilk to Max Wagner, will be entering his age 23 season in 2025 and I'm sure you're thinking well if he had fell down the board this far he must be a, a very different prospect than Max Wagner Max Wagner the 15th ranked prospect in the system Daryl Hernandez, the 16th ranked prospect in the system had a 779 OPS between three levels of the minors last year got up to double a buoy did struggle a little bit in double a tough start there with his first 13 games but I'm very content with Daryl Hernandez as my third baseman I had Hernandez and Max Wagner right next to each other on my big board. I think they have, again, based on their prospect rankings, very similar upside. They will be hitting the big leagues around the same time. So Daryl Hernandez is my third baseman. I will say Max Wagner is more of a true third baseman, whereas yes. Hernandez can play all three different infield positions and sh shortstop, second base, and third base. I don't know off the top of my head how many, how many games he's played at third base, but I think he's played the bulk of his games at shortstop. But in theory, that would lead to him being a quality third baseman and defensively. Theoretically, and actually what I might do is I might switch Daryl Hernandez, make him my shortstop, put Cesar Prieto at third base. That's Cesar Prieto okay. has played a little bit more third base, probably profiles a little bit better there, where Daryl Hernandez, a little bit more rangy, a little bit more athletic. So you're just making would me do fit more work. better. Yes, that's correct. Uh, fits a little bit better as my shortstop than as my third baseman. So I'll switch those two around. Cesar Prieto, my new starting third baseman, and Daryl Hernandez, my new starting shortstop. Which leaves me with my final pick, which is my second reliever. A few different names that I could throw out here. I think there's a few different options. But I'm going to go with Nick Vespi. He will be entering his age 29 season in 2025 had a 410 ERA in 25 games in the majors kind of bounced between the majors and triple a there were some other guys that I was thinking of where I was going man like they've got a an ERA in the mid threes in triple a that's pretty good Nick Vespi did not allow an earned run in triple a last year so I am banking on the upside of Nick Vespi even though we haven't really seen it thus far at the big league level and he is the final pick of my team all right your team is complete Tim Who's going to be your final pick? So I need a starting pitcher to round out my rotation. And between a couple guys, I'm going to take Noah DeNoyer here, who is currently 23 years old. He is on the 40-man roster, had an excellent season last year at the AA Bowie level where he was pitching mostly out of the bullpen. 
but had an ERA in the mid twos. He's a six, five guy, got good stuff. And I think he gives me the best option to round out my rotation of safety and upside with the remaining pitching prospects, just because he is going to be in his mid twenties. There's a couple guys that are a little bit younger and a little bit more of a mystery that have dealt with some injuries like a Carter Baumler, but I'm going to go with Denoyer here instead. Interesting. I was viewing him more as a reliever, but I guess you could look at him as a starter. What do you think, Brandon? Yeah, I was viewing him as a reliever as well, but he did have some starts last year. Not mad about it. I mean, he had some starts. You know, it's, uh, you know. Nah, I, if you want me to change it, no, I can change it. No, 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 Tim, you've made the nah. pick. It's your final pick. I'm not going to have any beef with that. But it leaves me a little bit thin for my final pick in the bullpen. But it also makes my decision a lot easier because I was between Noah DeNoyer, who has not pitched in the big leagues, and this guy who has, and that's Keegan Aiken. So I am going with Lefty Lefty and CNL Perez and Keegan Aiken in my bullpen. Aiken last year, quietly very good. 320 ERA. Strikeout numbers aren't gaudy for a reliever, just eight and a half, uh, but a low whip, 1.090 and 81 and two thirds. Can he be consistent enough? Now that he is a full time reliever, can he be consistent enough as a long man out of that bullpen to go with CNL Perez? who in, in my bullpen is going to have to be my closer. Yeah, I was between Aiken and Vespi for my final reliever. Aiken, hopefully he'll be an innings eater down the line, but we will see how his stuff translates there. All right. We have completed the all-future Orioles draft. Let's run through our rosters, and then let's make our case to the voters. Yeah. At catcher, Adley Rutschman, John Rhodes playing first base. Locking down second base is Connor Norby. The left side of my infield is Cesar Prieto at third and Daryl Hernandez at shortstop. My outfield, Austin Hayes, Colton Kowser, and Ryan McKenna. My designated hitter, Heston Kerstad. My starting rotation, John Means, D.L. Hall, Drew Rahm, and Justin Armbruster. And in my bullpen, I have Dylan Tate and Nick Vespi. Tim? So my catcher is Samuel Basayo. I've got Ryan Mountcastle at first base. Taryn Vavra is my second baseman. Jorge Mateo will be playing shortstop and hoping that still at the age of 30, 31, he will still be a plus defender at shortstop. Banking on that. Gunnar Henderson at third base. Outfield from left to right, Hudson Haskin. Cedric Mullins in center. Kyle Stowers in right field. Feel good about the outfield. DH is Max Wagner. The starting pitching rotation is Kyle Bradish. Tyler Wells, Cade Povich, and Noah DeNoyer. And then in the bullpen, I've got Felix Bautista, the best reliever on the board, as well as Brian Baker to round out my bullpen. And my team, top to bottom, Silas Ardouan is my catcher. I've got Kobe Mayo at first base. Joey Ortiz at second. Jordan Westberg is my third baseman. Jackson Holiday is my young, high-ceiling shortstop. Then Judd Fabian is in left. Dylan Beavers is in center. And Anthony Santander is in right. Ramon Urias is my third baseman. Then I've got Grayson Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, Seth Johnson, and Chase McDermott as my four starters. And in the bullpen, I have Cianon Perez and Keegan Aiken. Brendan, yeah. make the case for your team for the voters. Well, look, I think I present the best combination of both high upside and players that we already know a lot about. Adley Rutschman is far and away the best player in this draft, and I have some other quality players big league players right now. Austin Hayes will only be entering his age 29 season. John Means will only be 32 at that point. Dylan Tate, Dylan Tate, a proven big league reliever. Ryan McKenna, a solid big leaguer as well. I've got some players with really high upside like Colton Kowser, Heston Kerstad, DL Hall, and then the players that I drafted later in the draft. Well, you won't find anybody outside of the Orioles' top 30 prospect. John Rhodes, top 30 prospect. Prieto, Daryl Hernandez. Drew Rahm, Justin Armbruster, all in the Orioles' top 30. So even the guys that I was snagging later are still well thought to have very high upside. So I think I've got the best combination of quality big leaguers and really high upside. Tim, what's your case? My case is the goal of this exercise is to form a team for the 2025 season and the 2025 season only. And I think I've done the best job of doing that. You guys have higher upside players mixed in, especially Paul's roster. My team definitely does not have as many flashy prospects. So on paper, it doesn't speak to maybe the all-future Orioles draft quite as much and isn't going to wow you quite as much. But I've got Cedric Mullins, a guy who had a 30-30 season recently. I've got Kyle Stowers. I've got Gunnar Henderson. 
I've still got some upside and I feel like I don't really have a weakness at all as well. I guess catcher is a drop off compared to Brendan, but that was just comes with the territory. There weren't as many catchers to speak of. So going into the draft, I feel like I did a good job of kind of evaluating where I was at at different points. What were weaknesses in my roster and addressing that my starting rotation maybe isn't quite as good as your guys, but Kyle Bradish, Tyler Wells, still two guys that have proven it. And again, I'm viewing this more of a, all right, it's 2025. I'm trying to put the best roster together for just that season. And I think I've got the best of the three of us when you look at it from that lens. And my case to be made for my roster begins with the name of the game, the all-future Orioles draft. And if you are looking into the future of the Baltimore Orioles, it's the gentleman that you see on this list here. I am the only team that has three players in the top 100 prospect list. Grayson Rodriguez, Jackson Holiday, Jordan Westbrook. I have two guys in MLB Pipeline's top 15. I've got Kobe Mayo, who's an exciting young prospect who could be in the top 100 very soon. I've got Dylan Beavers, who could be a top 100 prospect at some point over the course of his minor league career. And then I've got Grayson Rodriguez, Dean Kramer, Seth Johnson in my rotation as well. I just think I have a very good team for the future. And 2025, sure, this may be a baby bird year for them. It may be an exciting young group in that year. But I think if everybody hits their ceiling and if everybody gets to the big leagues at a timetable that is expected, I think that I could have the best team here because it has clearly the highest ceiling of these three teams. That's the case that I have. Well, nice. if we if we look, if we were playing for 2027, I'm giving your team the medal. And if we're playing for 2024, I'm giving Tim's team the medal. And if but, we're playing you know. for 2023, you certainly have it, Brendan. Sure. It's that that team is going to be good next year. Yeah, uh, sure will be. Except for Daryl Hornays. Uh, well, he's a couple years <laughs> off. But you, the voter, are going to decide. We're going to tweet out the Twitter poll. You can vote as well in the comments on Facebook and vote on the in the comments on uh, Instagram as well where we will post this. So you're going to determine who's going to be the winner of the all-future Orioles draft. Guys, real quickly, I'll put you both on the spot. Who is the best player that you think went undrafted in this exercise, was there anybody that you thought should have gone off the board that was not selected? Yeah, I mean, there were a few top 30 prospects that don't get taken here. Freddie Ben Cosme, because he'll only be 22 yep. in 2025. Carter Baumler will only be 23 in 2025, but of course he gets Tommy John surgery. He has only been up to the single A level, not really sure what's going on there. But he's the 23rd ranked prospect in the system. Carter Young, another one as well, the 26th ranked prospect in the system. He was at least in consideration for me with Daryl Hernandez to be my shortstop. I think there are a few good players that didn't get drafted here. Tim, what do you think? Yeah, I would add Braylon Tavera as well, but I think Brendan hit on most of the names there. I think Carter Young is a guy that probably gets overlooked a little bit, but yeah. he could have fit into any of our infield positions as well. And I don't think there's a huge drop off between him and some of the guys that were taken in some of the later rounds. Yeah, some of the starting pitchers that are not in the top 30, I think of Carlos Tavera, Gene Pinto, Zach Peak, some starting pitchers that were left out there. Austin Voth who's going to be 30 at that point, but maybe he'll still be a productive pitcher at that point in his career. Mike Bauman. Mike Bauman, I thought, was certainly in consideration for one of these spots. So, who knows? We'll see. And then in 2025, we'll check back with our three rosters and see who did the best. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Hmm. At Brendan Morty is his Twitter handle. At Tim underscore Leonard 4 is Tim's. I am at Paul Mancano. Of course, you can... Watch the podcast every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on YouTube and on Facebook. Thanks so much for viewing, commenting, giving us your thoughts about how terrible our picks were as the draft went along. Thanks so much to Amy Jennings for producing this podcast. Be sure to vote for who you think has the best team. And, of course, the Mass and All Access podcast is brought to you by Toyota for legendary safety and reliability. Choose Toyota and let's go places. For Tim Leonard and Brendan Mortensen, I'm Paul Mancano. We'll catch you next time.